Welcome everyone. Um, I wish you like a good day. I'd like to welcome you on the first uh, session for the Tableau School. So uh, today we will have like uh, a session that will be an introduction to Tableau, basic chart and navigation. So, but some word about the Tableau School. A Tableau School, it's a Tableau user group. So we will learn everything about Tableau and we will go through the full curriculum. So we will really go to start from becoming a Tableau hero. Uh, it will be interactive and live session. After the session, you can ask uh, some uh, question using the Q&A. I will explain that to you. And uh, the particularity of this uh, Tableau School is that they are lead by Tableau Student Ambassador. I am just here to help them. <laughs> it's not my show. <laughs> it's their show today. Um, so uh, for the leader, I'm um, receiving, um, I'm helping uh, Idrak organizing uh, this event. And uh, Idrak will join and uh, say hello to you in some minutes. So um, Idrak is a Tableau Student Ambassador, is a financial intern at PP, is patient on economic, data fine and tea. We have to discuss about that in work because I love tea also myself. And he will be joining from Azerbaijan. Um, myself, I'm leading the Tableau Center of Enablement for like a Swiss bank. Uh, my patients in life are Tableau, chocolate and my dog. And uh, I will be joining from uh, Switzerland. I have the chance to be um, a Tableau visionary and a Tableau ambassador. Um, so, the ground rule for today is really enjoy it. This session, as you can see, is being recorded. Uh, so you just have to enjoy, maybe take some notes and um, follow Idrak. Uh, he will uh, give you after the material, will send you an email with everything you need. Um, if you want just to chat um, and interact with the audience, you can use the chat session and say maybe where you are joining from. If you have some question, please use the Q&A because it's uh, easier for us to track the question. So if during the session we are capable of answering the question live, we will do it. Otherwise, we will ask also some question to Idrak at the end of his session. So again, it's being recorded. You will be receiving like an email from us with uh, the link, um, most probably end of week. And uh, we will also promote it in social media. Please, if you like the session, please send self love uh, to Idrak. So today, like I said, it's about tab introduction to Tableau. We will host soon a new uh, session about time series, and another time we will do map and scatter plot. You see, so the idea is really that to go through the entire curriculum. Uh, and then uh, let me introduce our, um, the bravest Tableau student ambassador of all time for being the first one doing uh, this session, Yash. Jakuja, and I'm sorry, I probably mispronounced your name, but it's with my love, <laughs> my French accent and my love, Yash. <laughs> so I will stop uh, sharing and I will uh, let you share the screen. Awesome. Thanks Thanks for the lovely introduction, Annabelle. And yeah, so it, it's been a great initiative from you guys. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's been an honor for us to chip in for all the student ambassadors. So, yeah, just let me know when my screen is visible. Just to say. It is. It was visible. <laughs> no, you have to show again. Yeah, just to say. Okay. Yeah, I think it's visible now. Yes, it's perfect. All right. So, thanks, Annabelle, for the introduction. And, uh, so so this is the first session of Tableau School, as you rightly mentioned, and we are all pretty excited because it's, it's a kind of a new initiative. And uh, as she said, I'm kind of, you know, taking the first <laughs> charge here. So welcome you guys, all the all those who have taken out time to attend the session and all those who will be watching it over YouTube, for your, you guys as well. So the first session, we are going to uh, have an introduction to Tableau as uh, basic charts and navigation, how to go around, uh, how to start first by starting install and download Tableau with a student license as we all, you know, are right here as students. So, so yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And uh, 
a bit before before we jump into the straight into the content, a bit introduction about who I am. Although uh, Anwar is given a good introduction, so just about my journey a bit. So I like reading. I like uh, I'm a gamer and I like I'm a big tech nerd. So I like uh, I I know a lot of tools like Tableau, Photoshop, Figma, and currently I'm learning all tricks as well. So I started I started as Tableau student ambassador. Uh, I'm serving as a student ambassador 21 and 22, and I'm an incoming student for business analytics masters at University of Manchester. And currently I've just completed just a couple of weeks back uh, studying accountancy and finance at University of Delhi in India, and two times VOTD. So, and I was previously working at as a dashboard developer and a BI developer at Brandscapes Worldwide. So about my Tableau journey, it started in 20, December of 2019 when I started learning Tableau by myself using uh, self-help tools and resources. And then May 2020, I just got introduced into this wonderful world of Tableau Public, designing business and contributing to Tableau Public. And I interacted with the data fam over Twitter, LinkedIn, and various channels. And I must say, like, uh, it's been a lot of a journey just because of them, because how helpful they have been. And then October 2020, just like a catalyst thing happened for me when a whiz of mine got featured on Forbes. And then February 2021, date, uh, hashtag data fam got me my first Tableau job. And then there was no looking back. I learned so much at Brandscapes Worldwide. And then August 21 uh, was my first VOTD. And... Uh, Come September 21, I'm like the Tableau student ambassador. So currently running for next session as well. So it has been a wonderful term doing all these online sessions and, uh, you know, hanging out with you guys and trying to getting to interact with all of you on over Zoom. So yeah, much about me. And now we'll like to proceed to content. We'll be using Zoom for the session. And as Annabelle rightly mentioned, we can use the Q&A session towards the uh, end. I'll try to answer all the questions related to the, all the agenda. So agenda for today is introducing you guys to the world of Tableau. So what Tableau is, we have tried to divide this entire session into five uh, uh, sub sessions. So session one talks about Tableau platforms and most importantly, getting a Tableau student license. So Tableau student license is something like uh, kind of goes underrated and it helps you as a student. It has helped me a lot. And also when I, we, when we student ambassadors talk, it has been like uh, for all our, for all us on all our peers it has been a wonderful addition. So I would like to introduce you to it and uh, like, like you to leverage it as well for learning the, this wonderful tool that we have. For session two, we have got the number of data the uh, sources that are available for connections on Tableau, how to connect, and uh, much more. Session three, I introduce you to the Tableau interface. So what happens when you double click on that Tableau I desktop icon and uh, the screen appears that does gazillion number of beautiful things in terms of visualization and data and analytics. So session four, I this is a workshop session where I uh, introduce you to basic charts in Tableau and tell you how to how you can create them. Session five is just basic introduction about dashboards and stories. So yeah, that's the agenda for today. And uh, let's proceed with the session one, which is introduction to Tableau platforms and getting student license. So Tableau, uh, just a brief introduction, is a company that was recently in 2019 acquired by Salesforce. It has uh, to uh, like various products uh, under the Tableau frame. And uh, these are the five main products that are usually used. And there is also Tableau Prep, which, which uh, I can mention towards the end. And Tableau Desktop is where you can, uh, it's, a, so, uh, it's a service offered by them where you can create and uh, you know share your visualizations. So come to Tableau Server, taken by companies or organizations for uh, up uploading the Tableau take, take, uh, dashboards that are created using desktop. And uh, you know, uh, all the members of the organization can access that and uh, work on that together. So it's uh, usually used by businesses and organizations. Tableau Online comes a free resource where you can uh, create and you can uh, publish your visualizations on Tableau Public and Tableau Online. So these are free uh, servers uh, hosted by Tableau where you can uh, access them freely. Tableau Reader is uh, where uh, you can download that Tableau Reader and just view the visualizations. 
and uh, similar to Stable Desktop, but it doesn't give you the uh, ability to create visualizations and edit them. So yeah, these are the five main uh, tools that are usually uh, in the visualization sphere that I use. There are also other analytics tools, which are which is basically Tableau Prep, which is also very powerful, and we can discuss them in the in the further sessions as well. So yeah, this is about Tableau. And now, as I said, all important which you can and definitely should uh, leverage the Tableau student license. And just uh, addition to that, how to install Tableau Desktop, where you can just get started with things. So just, I would like to mention uh, TSA uh, student ambassador Rohit Prasad, who has helped to create this wonderful deck uh, for you know the guide, guide to download the student license and installation. Guide. So I'll just go through it. And uh, um, yeah, it's a very illustrated guide that will help you to in downloading that. We'll also share this PPT so you can uh, go through it towards the end. So first step is go to the go to this website link, and on the top you'll see such a icon a free get free student license. Click on that, and then uh, there there are a few details that you will get in your country, your personal information, your name and uh, first name, last name, school you are a part of. And then since it's a student license, you all know the drill, it's about verifying your current student status. You will need to you know, show your university ID, your university email, just as a proof that you are currently a student. So then step five is putting your personal information, email ID and things like that, and just click on verify. And once it's verified, you'll get a product key on your email. So it's usually an easy process to get it verified. Then you'll get a, on your email ID that you have provided, you'll get a product key for you on that. And then just bam, just go, now just, uh, you have the key, download the Tableau desktop. This is a guide to how to install the Tableau desktop. Go to the Tableau's official web link, go to products, and again, enter uh, the same drill, enter university address, download free trial and download the, uh, uh, depending on your system type, Mac or Windows, download your required software on the left bottom. This is a snippet of Windows in the Windows system where you can see the file is being downloaded. And once downloaded, just click on that and then you, you can open it and you can click install, agree, you, uh, agree to the terms and conditions and definitely try to read them once if you want. And uh, then, yeah, just uh, this screen pops up, enter your details and enter the product key that you have got. So the key that you got over your email, just verify the, the Tableau verifies that credentials. It's well and good. And uh, yeah, your registration is complete and you can access your Tableau software. Uh, this is just one scenario where, uh, you know, you have just downloaded the Tableau desktop and you have forgot to add the product key. So it's not that you can't add the product key now. It's uh, never too late. Just click on the help at the top at the top ribbon, and then open the manage. Click on manage product keys, just like it's shown here, and enter your product key. Then and here we go. You activate your product license, or uh, and activate your student license. So yeah, this was a quick guide or how, what Tableau is, what the ecosystem looks like, and how you can leverage the wonderful feature that we have got about of student license. So now we can get started with the Tableau learning. Now, once you have the student license, open up Tableau desktop. So with this, we come to the end of first session, which was introducing you to that, introducing you to the ecosystem. Now we move to the next one. Also, you can let me know if I'm going a bit too pacey. I can just slow a bit. Uh, Annabelle, just let me know if there are you know, comments on the section that I'm going a bit too fast. It's a so, good pass, Yash. You can, you can right. continue. Not too All fast. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's uh, reach on to the session two, which is welcome uh, to the Tableau and connecting data to Tableau desktop. So Tableau desktop offers you N number of options to connect to data. That's the wonderful thing about Tableau. We have Excel files, we have CSV, we have databases, and there are gazillion number of databases. We have AWS, Google Docs, or it like offers you N number of options. So that's that's what sets probably Tableau apart. So now uh, there are basically two types of connections in Tableau, as you can see in the top right on your screen here. Uh, there's a live connection 
there's an extra connection. So what live connection is, it's connected directly to the to your data source. And once you make data any changes to the data source, it's immediately reflected to the uh, Tableau desktop data that is loaded to Tableau desktop. So uh, obviously extract, it makes an extract and processes that data after that. So any changes made to the original data source won't be reflected on the extract until the extract is refreshed. So it's a general good practice to make an extract so that because live connection kind of, uh, you know, it's heavy on the servers and uh, uh, it takes up a lot of, a bit more space. So it's better practice when you join in data, make it extra. And if you have, especially if you have, uh, uh, like if you're, you're having big data. So just make an extract and then uh, start uh, working on that extract for building your visualizations. So yeah, this is connecting data with Tableau. And once, uh, once you open Tableau, this is the screen that you might see. So on the left is all the connections that are available. So this is just the uh, number of connections that is available and you can just click on the more button here and, and voila. see these are the number of, this, there's almost one scroll bar as well to see all the connections that are available. So you can see, you name, a, you name a data source and they've got a scout. So just click on any data source that you, any connection type of connection that you have, possibly I'll click Microsoft Excel and uh, connect my XLSX files, 93 version or latest versions, CSVs or any Excel macro files, any Excel files. So yeah, so this was about connecting data to Tableau. Now you have your data connected and uh, I know it's a bit of theory now, but we'll soon be jumping into the practical part of it as well. But this, you need to be cleared with this so that uh, you don't have any problems in understanding all of that. So now you have your data connected and uh, you just want to browse what, I just want to show how a Tableau interface looks like. So without the circles and the numbers that I have just added for your, uh, for explaining in the few further slides. So this is what a Tableau screen will look like. So now from right from one to 12, I'll explain you what every ribbon or every uh, shelf or card means in Tableau and what is their, what are their features. So the number one is your Tableau ribbon. On the topmost part, the topmost uh, uh, element of the screen has all these 11 functions. So right from file to help, file does it all it does all the file functions so if you are uh, an excel user or any other tool user you you have usually seen these ribbons at the top which help ease off your work so what the file does file does is or performs all the file files operations like saving the tableau file importing a tableau file opening closing all the file features and then data connecting with the data source editing connections and adding new data source, all, all stuff related to data. And there is worksheet, dashboard, and story. So this end that a uh, general framework that a Tableau dashboard follows. So worksheet are basic elements and then comes multiple worksheets with dashboards and then stories. All the functions associated with it, if you want to try out you know, editing or uh, making changes, all, all are available in the super. And then comes analysis. All your analysis functions are available under that. We'll eventually see out these in, uh, further in today's session as well as upcoming sessions. Then we'll have uh, format, all the formatting related options to worksheets is available. Then server adding, uh, uh, uploading your dashboards to a organization server, uploading it to Tableau Public, all that's available here. Window also has certain features, journal cover, and then there is help. So similar to all, what all other tools show, like if you want uh, any help on a, on a tool, uh, Tableau has a pretty active community as well with all, the, all your questions being answered by these visionaries and uh, all the people who are always ready to help on the platforms. So yeah, there is help. And the number two, it's a Tableau toolbar. Again, making your life easy day in, day out. So without this, I mean, you have, this saves you a lot, lots of clicks. So undo and redo. I mean, oh yeah, just to add a note in this, all the basic uh, shortcuts that are control Z, control Y, also work on Tableau for undo and redo. Uh, saving, saving files, 
and uh, any changes that you have made, just click on this button and they get saved. Removing sheet, duplicating sheet, clear sheet, uh, sorting. Uh, this is this one is for sorting, swapping rows and columns, and uh, presentation modes. Whether if you want to present, you want to show the marks, you want to make it of standard size, full view, edit, uh, full length, full height. So all the size elements. So yeah, yet again another helpful uh, toolbar. Now we come to the connected data sources. So here you uh, you see all your connected data sources that you have. Here I have like it's already one shown here orders of sample superstore. You can have a uh, multiple number of data sources with joins, with relationship, blending, all that complex stuff here on the cover. And, uh, and, uh, sorry, sorry. And uh, then we have uh, four, uh, then we have measures and uh, dimensions. Uh, so, the data rows and columns is divided into dimensions and measures. We have qualitative data and uh, quantitative data, both types of data. So a dimension presents all the qualitative data that we have, uh, like names, dates, text, geographical data, especially like names of countries and things like that. And uh, we have also like uh, in geographical data, we also have latitudes and longitudes that is uh, like can come under measures. So there are independent variables and dependent variables. And the measure it shows quantitative data, numeric values, all the dependent variables like your sales, your discount, which you can see number five here. Sales, quantity, profit, discount. So all that quantitative data. Then we have got the sheets ribbon. So adding sheets, navigating through sheets, or uh, this helps you to add sheets, add dashboards, add stories organizing your sheets and dashboards, like deleting them, adding them, changing the colors of the sheet, which helps you to, which helps you to understand what all sheet contains, color coding it, and uh, adding stories, deleting stories, and stuff like that, which we're gonna cover in the next slide. And then this is a quite underrated feature, the pages shelf, I've also tried to cover this. Uh, once you a sheet, it helps you to break that into multiple set of pages based upon uh, any type of, uh, uh, measure or dimension that you add to this pages shelf. So it helps you for better analysis and data based on desired dimensions and uh, measures. So uh, it gives you a control panel in, at the right, which helps you to switch across pages. And uh, we've got the filter shelf, filter shelf. I mean, the most utilized thing of Tableau and which makes it even more fun. We have, uh, it helps you to uh, control what data which you want to include, what data which you don't want to show, and it can perform so many wonderful things. So it's, uh, it includes internal filters as well as external filters. So there basically uh, Tableau has an order of preference for filters. So there are these six type of filters and they are arranged, uh, once you can see in the right, they are arranged in their order of preference. So you have extract filters, data extract filters which has the topmost order of preference, uh, topmost in the list, and then comes data source filters, context filters, dimension filters, and measured filters. So we'll see them uh, once we form our, uh, in the next sessions or further in the session, we do dashboarding, we see we'll perform all these sessions, uh, all these uh, filter tasks. Now, the mark shelf. So helps you to control the formatting, how your data, how your visualization should appear, how your data should look. Has following functionalities, uh, controlling the color, the size of the marks, the size of labels, uh, the label size, formatting, text, everything about labels and details, which is another detailed concept in Tableau. Uh, Tooltips, shapes, so all that's, is covered by the mark shelf. Now, uh, the data, when you create a visualization in Tableau, uh, it, uh, it is created also, it's basically based around the concept of rows and columns, just like, you know, uh, many tools like maybe Excel and many data oriented tools are associated with it. So rows and columns helps you to arrange visualizations. And uh, the number 11th is a, uh, visualization pane, it's, that's what we call. And this is the place where the magic happens. This is the this is where you create your all attractive visualizations that you go through the Tableau public or have you have ever come across. 
all that that dashboards this is the element uh, building element of the building block so yeah this these are the main 11 points that uh, you know that how a tableau interface looks like now we have a game changer we have a show me button so if you are uh, starting with tableau i mean this is a very powerful feature helps you to create these 24 chart types that are shown here like with a single click just click on these chart types and with your data placed and bam, you have these chart types ready so it is easiest way i mean for beginners it's like a blessing so it helps you to automatically arrange arrange those uh, pills rows and marks uh, in rows and columns and mark shelves so yeah you can get started with this but i would say like uh, learn the essence of rows and columns as well going ahead so yeah that was the end of session three i mean it might have been a good introductory session for you so uh, i mean now we'll just build on that pace that we have generated now let's uh going on to building some basic charts in tableau so here i have a list of six basic charts so yeah six basic charts which i'm going to switch over to my tableau screen i have a uh, data uh, connected to the source uh, which is uh, global superstore data that we are going to also share you along with the dashboard that we are creating so these are the six charts we'll go one by one and uh, we'll try to you know uh, figure a way out like uh, what type of data what type of dimensions and measures that we can use to plot these charts so i would like you to you know think around that so a line chart so uh, if you all know line chart is usually used for build, for plotting data series and trends so when i talk about trends we have historical data we have future data the predictions the past data which is the historical data so every data you know shows a trend so if you have seen that stock screen like how uh, like that's a line chart how it goes like, you know, increasing decreasing falling bull bar, bull bullish market bearish market all that can be depicted through a line chart because it has a key element every line chart has a key element to it which is the date the date field the time field the date time so now so i think we have already answered the question the clear uh, the one common element or one basic element that must be present for a line chart is that date field so yeah let's switch over to tableau yeah, let me know, uh, Annabelle, let me know when my Tableau screen is visible. So it is. Yeah, you can see so, it. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, uh, just a second, I think it's loading the data. My main and extract here. So it shouldn't take this much time. Yeah, okay, we are ready. So this is a global superstore data that we have here. Uh, we'll share this data after this session and also possibly the workbook as well. So, uh, just a second, guys, it's loading. So, uh, while it's loading, if you have any questions for like the, the for on the topics that I have covered, I would like to take those. Yeah, the slides would be available and continuous and discrete. Okay. So uh, the data in Tableau, all the data that you download is uh, can be represented in continuous form or discrete. So uh, I usually tend to see it as green pills and blue pills. Continuous are the green pills one, which represent a set of continuous form of data. And uh, discrete, again, is your categorical form of data. So there's a thin line of difference between discrete dimensions, so all that, uh, all that of overlaps. So uh, once we do the... I mean, uh, it's really much more clear once we plot, try to plot a line chart. So let's, so this is our data. Uh, this is a global superstore data. We have these technology categories, technology, furniture, office supplies. We have these cities, as you can see, it's New York City, Brisbane, Berlin. So it's a, I think a global uh, form of data like from multiple countries, multiple cities. We have customer IDs, which is, I mean, the granularity of the data. So we have the order ID as well, customer name, market, order priority, again, a discrete field. 
uh, you know, like with critical, medium, high, low, all these categories, posting codes, product ID, product name, very intuitive names, region, row ID, segment, consumer segment, corporate segment, and home office segment. And we have the shipping date or uh, date field, which we are going to utilize, uh, ship mode, state, subcategory, subcategories is the categories for you divided into these subcategories. And then we have the green ones, that is the continuous or the measures that we need to call the quantitative data, discount, profit, quantity, sales, shipping cost. This is where we have, we want to see how this data looks like the dependent variables. So let's move to the sheet one and as promised, try to create, let's move back to the line chart. So what's a line chart? The key element, as I said, is the date field. So let's see what type of date field we have. Here we have order date. I've just searched for date. I've got two date types, order date and shipping dates. You can see these are the data types. The shows a calendar, which means it's a date data type, which works good for us. So let's see what, or uh, let's try to drag order date in rows. So yeah, right now it's showing me in blue one, which means uh, this uh, your <clears throat> your discrete or yeah. So this this showing years. It has data from 2016, 2019, so roughly four years of data. I this plus sign shows which can be further drilled down. Let's try to click on this. We have quarters. We have all four quarters for 16 for all the four years. Let's do a further drill down and we have months as well. So yeah, it's a complete four year data as I can see. All right, so let's try to check, uh, for, let's try to plot sales. Since we want to see a yearly trend or the monthly trend for the sales. So let's try to pull it here. Now we see this and uh, let's try to break it down. So this is, I'll try to swap. As I said, this is swapping rows and columns. As you can see, the short plus is control plus W. I just need to click. This is how it looks. So 2016, we had approximately uh, 22 million, I guess, yeah, from that sales. And then, uh, yeah, so it's constantly increasing. So let's break it down into months. And this is where your question is going to be answered. So this is discrete. So it's like breaking down every year and then quarter. So this is discrete. Now, you, if you want to see one single line, you just go back and try to make it continuous. All right, this is yearly. And uh, sorry, um, okay. this one, yeah, so this is continuous. The green pills, as I said, now I try to drill in. Let's go to month. Yeah, so it's showing you the continuous numbers. It's gone to quarters. I'm showing you the continuous quarters, like you know, all one single line joining. Now I want to see this monthly trend, so I'll just go to month. Now I can see these trends. Like this is a trend chart or the line chart as you call it. Now what I can see is months, all the data that I have monthly, month-wise connected to right from January 2016 all the way to December in 2019. Now, how, how can we predict the trends? So you can see like this is the month of September or let me make it annual year. Just let me categorize it to year as well. Monthly, just add monthly to, sorry, just add, uh, Suppose let's add category. So we have this category to color. So see, for all the three categories that we have, furniture, office supplies, technology, we see a general trend. Around this month of June, we see that all the sales, the total sales are rising. So at least if we have plotted the entire June month's data, and then we see uh, in July, all the trends are falling. So June up, July down. This is how you look at trends uh, observing a line chart. So yeah, this is how you cover a line chart. And uh, all right, let's move back to the PPT. And I think we are done now with the line chart. So next up, area chart. So 
area chart is kind of similar. It has uh, with the line chart, it has a uh, the similar building block, which is the date field or the time date time field, and it also shows trends. But there is one difference that makes it different from a line chart. It shows you highlighted uh, the area beneath be, be, below these lines, colored lines are highlighted, which shows you the total figure. Okay, let us go back to the Tableau screen. And this is your total line chart that we have, right from January to December. So let me make it continuous. And let, let us see monthly one. All right, yeah. So let's see, this is a continuous field. Now I want to make convert this into an area chart. So I just go to this marks type. You can always use the show me button, which is also a, a better practice. If you are starting with Tableau, you get to see how these are placed automatically arranges. So I just uh, make this click on this area chart and it's converted to an area chart. It shows me like uh, similar, it's showing me the lines, just like a line chart. But under these the area is spelled, which shows you like the total sales for that um, particular category as well. So yeah, it's an area chart looks like this. Now let's move to the next chart type. So what's the next chart type? Here we go, we've covered the area chart. Now we are on to bar chart. All right, so what's bar chart? Bar chart helps you to plot data, which is the dependent variables like the sales, discounts, or mm, I mean, profits, all these dependent variables or the numeric variable, quantitative numeric variables, uh, and map them to ca these categories or categorical data, which we call discrete. So let's check that. There, so let's um, go again back to Tableau. Uh, I'll just show you one thing. Let's move to the show me button. So this is a bar chart, horizontal bars. So you can see here, there should be one or more measures and zero or more dimensions. So, but we need to plot it against categories. So we need a, we need one dimension and one measure. So we have one thing we are sure we are plotting a measure. So at least one measure is needed. So maybe I'll go for sales. Uh, here we go. This is, the, this is a single bar chart for the sales. Now I want to divide it on the basis of categories. So let's drag categories to, yeah. So this is, you can see it's divided into categories. You can just use this to switch between bars and columns. Here's a bar, column, and here you go. So these are the three types of categories and furniture, office supplies, and technologies. And these are the bars. So you can uh, easily, you know, you can, uh, so, yeah, you can easily sort these bars as well. Let me sort these into descending. Here we go, sorted in descending order. So it shows me the sales, the category and the sales amount. Now uh, you can see again, I have created this hierarchy, which is you can drill it down. So I have done it for category and subcategory. And just uh, click on this and bam, you have a bar for technologies and these different bars for uh, sub subcategories within these uh, primary three categories. So this is how you build a bar chart. And uh, so I'm just giving you a basic introduction on how to create these basic charts. And then we can, in the further five or six sessions that we are lined up, we can build on this. So, all right. Then we have the third one. Uh, the not so famous type of chart, pie chart. But uh, I mean, I am not that much uh, pro or against pie. If it helps a purpose, it definitely does. So I follow, I personally tend to follow a general rule. Uh, it's a rule of five. If you have more than five categories, don't use a pie chart. Someone, someone says seven, so someone says five, uh, it's five for me. So let me show you how. All right, so let's move to this. So I'll show you two scenarios why you should use for, it can be helpful for less number of uh, independent independent variables and why it should, it's uh, very confusing for more number of dependent variables. So again, we will be plotting this and I'll show you how to make this easily using the show me button. It's a bit of complicated when I try to do it uh, 
using the mark shelf, making it pi, and using the angle size and everything. So then we can maybe reverse engineer that. So let's see. Let's try to make sales that we are making. And, uh, or, yeah, okay. Let's try to make sales and then we'll try to present, then try to subdivide it into maybe let's use something else, maybe ship mode. Yeah. So, so here we have a bar created. We have first class, same day, second class, and standard class. This is the, these are the ship modes. So we have four categories, falls into, falls under my, uh, that I, like my reservation that I have to use not more than five. So let's make a pie chart with this. I'll just, uh, we'll just try to re-engineer that from show me to uh, uh, discuss it after that using the mark shelf. So just click on show me and click on this pie and bam, we have a pie chart created here. So this is how it looks. The shortcut. So this is a uh, kind of a neat tip. Shortcut for increasing the size is Control Shift B. Just press, 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 and we have a good pie. Okay, we have a good pie here. So let's so for it since it presents proportion, the percentage of total. So let's make it. Uh, make this sales. So this is quick table calculations. Uh, just. Uh, Ignore this part for a while. We can cover this after. I'm just converting this into percentage of total. So now you can see I've just converted into the total number of sales, like the dollar sales into percentage, which is like roughly 60% uh, standard class delivery, 15% uh, first class, and so on and so forth. Let's get in a particular order. So this is the order that we want to follow. And uh, this is the color coding, standard class, second class, first class, same. I'm just adding labels here so that you can easily do that. So yeah, now you can see the mark shelf, right? We have a shipping mode to add it to the color. So shipping, the color for the pie is decided by shipping modes, four types of shipping modes, as you can see with this legend. Then this is what we call an angle. So we have used some sales for the angle. So how, at what radius these pi should be cut. So that's what an angle represents. So I've used some of sales and percentage that for percentage of total for that. So that it uh, tells them how roughly how, what angles, uh, uh, what angle uh, it should cut the pi. This is the size, uh, which represents again the radius of the pi. And uh, now we have labels. These are for labels, the text ones. Uh, so I just added some of sales, uh, the percentage shows here as labels. Now this is, we had four, which is less than five uh, categorical uh, categories. Now I'll show you why, why where pi is uh, a big, I mean, should kindly be avoided. So let's see a category where we have too many, uh, variable where we have too many categories. For instance, let's take probably the product name. Right. We have lots of product names. So imagine there are too many product names. Yeah, there are, let me check how many product names here are. Sorry. Uh, we have roughly, let's see. We have roughly 3788 marks. So we have 3788 product names. So, I think it's way too much. I'll just try to add sales and I'll try to clean up pi. Think. So this is how your pi would look like. I mean, 378 is way too much, but uh, this is how your pi would look like. So that's why I say like more than five or more than five or six is a waste of time. So pi doesn't convey you any information. So it can, it can be a good chart type, it can be a bad chart type, depending on uh, what analysis it indicates. All right, so I think that's a bit about pi. Now we are moving to scatter plots. I mean, the best analytic visualization there is, it uh, helps you to, you know, get you, uh, it's based on two measures and it leads to n number of analysis. So there is correlation, there is uh, covariance, and everything. Scatter plots covers everything, trends, predictions, everything. So as I said, two variables relates to variables and two numeric variables in data. So kind of a unique chart type in that matter. 
So, okay, without further ado, let's move to Tableau and try to design a scatter plot. Uh, again, we try to take two measures. So, we take one sales and maybe one profit. So, these are two green pills, two continuous and two measures. So, and we can see only one mark because we have used sum of sales and plotted it against sum of profit. Total sum of sales in our data is around 12 million. Yeah. And total profit is around uh, 1467k. So around 1400,000. So now we are going to do something brilliant. So we are going to just drop in a category as a dimension. See what happens. Here. Just uh, maybe instead of category, let me use product name. Yeah, we use that in the file. So let me drag this into detail. So now this, when I drop this into detail, this one single uh, mark at the top will be divided into all the product, trying to multiple some 3788 marks on the number of product names that we have and plot the sales against the profit on each product. So I drop it here and this is how it looks like. So, yeah. So this is the one which has maximum profit and sales is okay, it's around $60,000. So the, what is this? Product name is Canon, Canon Image Class 2200 Advanced Copier. It is very profitable for sure and can be, uh, and the sales can be pushed even more. And let's see, it has the maximum sales uh, of this Apple smartphone full size. So around $86,000 of sales we have, and it's kind of leading, uh, giving us average profit of around 6,000K. Now this is one I see, uh, has very less profits. It has loss actually of $9,000. And uh, we have low sales for it as well. It is Cubify, Cubex, 3D printer, double head print. So this is a product maybe we can, you know, reduce, uh, I mean, stop producing it or stop buying it for further sales. So this is all the types of analysis that can be done in uh, using I mean, scatter plots. It's as I said, so it's a very powerful one. So, this is to name just a few. And there are a lot of things that we can do here adding the trend lines, uh, doing regression, and doing correlations, all of that. So, now it's like uh, since Tableau is all about visual, much more about visualization. So, let's try to make this chart uh, scatter plot a bit more appealing. Let's say let's add uh, this category to maybe color. And the mark shelf. Uh, you can see it's been divided into three colors. As you can see, you know, these are this is the legend. All the furniture goes blue, all the tech, which is at the top profits, goes red, and all the cluster here, red, blue, and orange for office supplies. So let's try to change the mark, maybe make it circle or oh, filled circle. So yeah, so this is how you can make it more. Um, attractive, appealing visualization leading to anal analytics. And this is again a very powerful pane which we're going to cover definitely. You can add a constant line, you can add an average line, reference bands, all these are very uh, much used. The clusters, trend lines for predictive analytics, for uh, predicting the future points, you know, what, what you need to do, what sales that you need to reduce, what uh, products that you need to push, on all of that. So let's not make it that uh, hands-on right now. All right, so this was about scatter plot. Now we move back to the PPD, we just one more left. And again, like uh, Tableau is the best for creating maps. So plotting the geospatial data, spatial analytics. So let's go create a map in Tableau. A new sheet, adding new sheet. So for maps, the important thing is you need to have geographical data. What's geographical data, which has latitudes, longitudes. So when you import any geographical fields, the data type looks like this. So it's shape of a globe. So understand it's a geographical data. We, I have just created a hierarchy for this, which is country, then state, and then which is right into cities. Now we have, uh, see, whenever you get uh, geographical data in Tableau, since we have we had these three in uh, our data set, there is immediately latitudes, these are two auto-generated fields in terms of measures, latitudes, and longitudes. So I think uh, that's pretty well and clear. Latitudes and longitudes are how 
uh, geographical features and data is presented. And even on the Earth, I mean, if Earth is a tableau visualization screen, the attitudes and longitudes help you to plot those spaces. So here we go. Let's try to. Uh, I'll just see the see how simple it is. I'll just try to press like you know double click in this geographical field, and that automatically detects all the longitudes and latitudes, and presents it uh, presents it on the screen. So these this, these are the countries or these are yeah these are the countries that are available in your data set. So I see these are all the countries that are available in my data set. Now. Uh, I have these countries plotted. All these, there are, let me check how many. Now, these are this many countries. And now I use the sales. I see how, which country is contributing how much uh, for the sales. So I just add sales to color. So X, uh, okay. let's give it some time. All right, so this shows me how what extent of, you know, with the extent of blue that this country has this much sales, this country has, uh, this is a failed map. And uh, for example, United States has the maximum sales. So this is where maybe uh, our business is performing the best. And uh, in China, it's good, India, and all that. All right. So let's, this is a failed map. I'll be using maybe, yeah, maybe this or let me, drag sales to size as well so that all the circle sizes are you know linked with the uh, the sales variable just try to increase the size yeah that works well now let's now we can see it's maximum sales united states then france does pretty well as well germany these three big countries in europe germany uk france then we are doing pretty well in australia as well and China, India. So it's a big, looks good performing business huh? worldwide. So I'll just now show you how to dive deeper. We have country analysis where we have looked at USA is doing really well. Now we dive deep into states. Which states in the US or in the Australia, UK are doing well? So we can see these three big circles. Let's check what it is. So California. California is uh, contributing a lot. Uh, this one. New York, I mean, obviously, and Texas. So all the big cities, all the coastal big of the US are performing really good. So then we, let's see, this is a pretty big circle. Obviously, United Kingdom, England, it's doing pretty well. And Queensland, New South Wales, these are also top performers. Now let's drive a bit more granular to the cities. Let's see how, how this goes. So, I just click on the plus save, which I've seen in the cities. So yeah, these are, the, for example, New York City, uh, Los Angeles in California is a top contributor. Uh, San Francisco in California is also a top contributor. So Vienna, Austria, again, a good contributor here. And uh, London. So these are the cities, Brisbane and Queensland, Sydney. Uh, Adelaide, all these. Or uh, if you see here, yeah, Dhaka is also a good. So it's a pretty expanded business. Yeah, it's doing well in Indonesia and Jakarta. So yeah, in so many states in India, cities and states in India as well. So yeah, this is how your map would look like, and uh, this is how you can utilize it to do your analysis. And with that, we have covered the six chart types that I promised before the start of this session. So I hope that was helpful. And now we have these different chart types that we haven't covered. And uh, with a few bit of uh, basic to advanced knowledge in Tableau, you can definitely try your hand and uh, learn all these chart types, Me Spider, Red R, Comparison Chart, Stack Bar Chart, Gorgeous. I mean, these are not conventional chart types to use uh, in your dashboards, but uh, for me, like a personal story would be, I have learned a lot about Tableau creating calculations, uh, debugging, and uh, you know, best practices or visualizations. All that by creating these charts. So, just a suggestion: if you want to, you know, if you are progressing that path around Tableau, you can just pick up a data set and maybe create, uh, try to look over all the blogs and all the wonderful resources and contents that we have got on. Uh, 
there are all the resources are available online. We utilize them, maybe create a spider, radar, share them with the data fab community, take some feedbacks, and that's how we grow, right? So yeah, that's end of session four, probably our very detailed session. So before moving on to session five, I like you can uh, even I can and even you can take a like four or five seconds breather because I know it has been a, a bit too much uh, for a first session, but I hope you guys liked it. So yeah, moving on, session five. I mean, it's a lot of this session will be covered in subsequent uh, a, uh, what we call like sessions in our Tableau School series uh, as a part of Tableau School July sessions. So which will cover in, in the future webinars. So introducing dashboards and stories. So I'm just gonna uh, explain you what the layout is, like how, what is the most elemental block and how it you know drills down into uh, the building blocks that you see, the dashboards, the stories that communicate you a story. So, all right. So it's uh, first of all the most elemental thing within a workbook when you select to like you know connect to the data you uh, open the workbook Tableau screen that's that is a worksheet so it contains a single view uh, it has multiple shells cards and legends that I showed the uh, the screen or the interface that I showed that was of a worksheet and all the panes and the sidebars are those are the worksheets. Now you have the MVPs, your dashboards. So what are dashboards composed of? Dashboards are composed of multiple worksheets and actions, filters, and uh, different containers, all of that complex stuff. So not that complex if you, you know, uh, learn it right. So uh, it's a collection of, you know, several views, obviously difference from the worksheet. It has multiple views. And if you have a set of views, if you have multiple worksheets, if you have one pie chart, one bar chart, one line chart, so you have three sheets. You want to convey a story, you create a dashboard. So you have three visualization, you create a like, you know, beautifully presented dashboard, and then you hand it over to your uh, manager or uh, client or customer, whoever is going to utilize that data and possibly save him or her from the hassle of going through those rows and columns. I mean, that's our job, right? So we just use this, we just save time and Tableau definitely helps us in doing that. So then we have stories. I think it's a really unique feature to Tableau, the stories. So you would have usually heard uh, vis visual analytics people or the BI developers, your dashboard should communicate a story. There should be, you know, a good co coherence uh, when you are explaining your dashboards, when you are explaining your charts used, when you are trying to get analysis out of the data. So that's where stories help you. So very powerful data, but underutilized, I would say. And uh, so it helps you to showcase a series of sequence of visualizations that you know you that can work together to convey that uh, story. So it helps you to convey that narrative, what you need to present, what you need to highlight, so all that. So yeah, so these are the building blocks, worksheets, dashboards, and stories. Uh, I also, I already explained you this uh, data, uh, this sheets ribbon that we have got helps you in navigating through the sheets, dashboards, and stories. So yeah, that is pretty much uh, it uh, for this session, obviously. We'll definitely cover a lot more on this worksheets, dashboards, stories. It like things gonna you know uh, speed up now while we are moving to the next uh, session. With that, I have come to the end of first session along with the session five as well. So first webinar as well, and uh, I hope I've explained you as much as I wanted to. I, I've got the I mean message right. I've got the. Uh, I've got the ball rolling for the Tableau School. And uh, now uh, it's all about you. If you have any questions you want to ask, I'll just move to the Q&A. Annabelle, also, if there was any question while I was presenting. Yes, you had some question. Idrak, do you want like, uh, we had some question on the chat and on the Q&A. 
the drug if you want like to uh -huh. uh, pick them, pick some of them. I so... see. Will you further explain a story? Uh, I mean, we will, but not in this session because we were we are trying to keep it short and sweet. All the sessions that we have planned, not more than one, one or 15 minutes. So, so that it doesn't go boring for you guys, right? So we'll cover that in the subsequent sessions. We All will right. have sessions like advanced dashboards and storytelling. So you will see uh, all these the, in, in that in those sessions. All right, I'll go to these questions. Yeah, concerning the slide, I suppose that yes, uh, you will uh, share the slide with us, and we yeah. can send uh, to the uh, yeah to all the attendee and the one yeah. who also register. We will send the slide, mm -hmm. and we will also try to publish it on the um, Tableau forum. But Yash, maybe if you have a blog, you can also put them on your blog. But we can put all these references on the email that we will send. Oh, sure, sure thing. I'll just provide you with the slides and we'll provide you with the data, with the visualization that we have created and every other resource that we have used in this presentation, everything will be you know, uploaded. Uh, how do I make the dashboard have all I need? Uh, I think uh, this question from Walter asks, how do I make the dashboard have all I need? So it's basically the questions that you want your dashboard to answer. And uh, so basically the questions that need to be answered need to be answered through that dashboard. So we have this, uh, I follow this five second rule. Uh, when you start looking at a dashboard, within five seconds, you need to you know, have an idea what the dashboard needs to talk about. And after that, when you start digging in, digging in, you need the audience, you need the cust uh, like the viewer of the dashboard to play along with the dashboard a bit, but not too much. That needs to be kept in mind. And also, I think the chart type really matters as well. So uh, like when you are uh, talking about the corporate-based setup, it uh, you know, they usually stick with uh, what you call is like the uh, the basic chart types or which are easier to con communicate the message. I think Annabelle can add more to that because she has like a ton of more experience than us. So would you like to add anything to that, Annabelle? Yes, I mean, uh, dashboard, uh, when you say everything you, uh, you need, it's really, you really have to think through uh, your requirements and often by making some action on the dashboard you can reduce the number of views that you need so it's very very important that uh, to consider um, how you will use the dashboard and why you need this um, uh, dashboard why you need to do this analysis to really reduce and yeah the requirements the stakeholder uh, the stakeholder requirements is like the main part of our job yeah all right, so we have your one more question. How do I take my worksheet output to say a PowerPoint or MS Word report? I think you can uh, export that as an image with all the legends and everything that in the worksheet you want. And then you can maybe place that image on your PowerPoint screen as a add image option from PowerPoint. Tableau a bit little looks like to Power BI, right? Uh, I mean, there are similarities, there are differences, depends on what you want to use it for and how you want to use it for. So. But Tableau is better. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely, plus one on that. All right. All right. Any other questions? If not, maybe you can continue, Yash. I know that you have an exciting news for us, Yash, right? Yes. Uh, this is it. Just, just. 
I'm not able to switch to the next slide. Uh, all right. All right. So, guys, just before we you know move to the end, I just have to you know portray this message out there. We are having a student wizard challenge. So, for all the students who are currently enrolled in any universities or college or course or a degree anywhere, so you guys can participate and. Uh, all the data source and all the available resources are all available on this slide that I've created. And you can just click on this submit link. It's a submit link button and you can get all the resources. The data is uploaded in, the, in Kegel, which is an excellent source for downloading free source data. And you can uh, you know, browse that as well a bit and get to know that before, if you are starting into data and analytics and stuff. So the deadline is 20th July, it's like uh, around a week. So you have good time to create that and possibly win exciting Tableau merch and swag, what we call, and certificates and e-learning coupons as well. So I hope you take out time and try to participate in this challenge. So yeah, I think now that is all for me. I would like to hand it over to Pedro and Annabelle. Thank you guys. Thank you, Yash. Thank you. Uh, you were amazing. Your uh, presentation was amazing. It was really, uh, under how to say, uh, easy to understand. I really liked. And <clears throat> about the next session, uh, there are some questions also in the chat. I see about the next uh, session. We will have the session called Time Series Aggregation and Filters. Uh, I will be the presenter and I will talk about this topic. Um, you can uh, know about the date and time uh, through our, uh, how to say, uh, website from um, Tableau user groups, Tableau school user group. Uh, and you can also follow, uh, how to say, uh, I think Tableau will also share it. Yes, Annabelle. And yes, Tableau will share and uh, we will share in our social uh, channels. So, and also we, we, we will email uh, this, uh, how to say, the participants of this e event about the next session. So you, you will be aware about uh, the next session via your emails. And, uh, and do you have any program for working professional? Uh, Annabelle can answer this question, I think. I mean, you can, yeah, I was trying to, to answer by writing, but I can tell the answer. You can totally follow us. It's not because like, it's like uh, we speak a lot about students that it's only limited to students. So where is the working professional also welcome? Uh, you have different um, tugs uh, going on. I mean, we have the analytic tug. The problem that of the analytic code is like already you still need to know. It is really like for beginner. So it's really uh, to uh, help you to uh, from uh, the start to euro. So that's why we uh, recommend it. So depending of your level, I would say good time. You can contact me by uh, LinkedIn and I will tell you or try to orient you. But if you are like a beginner, this is a good one for you, even if you are not a student anymore. Yes, absolutely. Uh, school is not for just uh, students today because the technology grows and everyone needs uh, to learn. Yeah. I mean, we're all students, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So do we have any other questions? So I saw no. So yeah, don't Stop worry, sure. we'll send you the information also about the challenge by email. So if you mm -hmm. don't have any uh, more question, I think it's time to say goodbye until next time. Yes, uh, thank you for joining all. Goodbye, see you in the next session. Thank you, bye-bye.